Hey there, I'm Felicia Lowe from Sweet Georgia, and today I want to show you how to prepare a hand-dyed double sock blank for knitting, crocheting, weaving, or however you want to use your yarn. This sock blank that I'm holding is actually a limited edition colorway that we created for our Sweet Georgia Secret Stash Club, which is our monthly hand-dyed yarn club that you can join at any time. Now, a sock blank is a piece of fabric that's just been knitted from undyed yarn. The idea here is that we take the undyed knitted fabric and then we dye it into colors that we like. We can splash dye on it, we can scrunch it up and dip it in dye, or even paint an entire picture on the fabric, just like a canvas. And then the dyed sock blank can be unraveled and then remade into your actual project, whether that's a hat or a shawl or part of a sweater or whatever you want to make. Then the colors that are dyed in the sock blank will be redistributed into your project. And so this makes the color shifts and transitions more smooth and blended in your final project. Now, in the case of a single sock blank, the fabric is knit with one strand of yarn, and as you unravel the one strand, you can see the color change along the length of the yarn. Now, with a double sock blank like this, the fabric is actually knit with two strands of yarn held together. And so when you unravel a double sock blank, you end up with two strands of yarn that have nearly identical dye markings. So Theoretically, you could make two finished items that look almost identical. So this is helpful if you want to make two identical socks or two identical hand warmers. So you can see here, there's a knot that marks the beginning of the sock blank. So I'm going to take that knot apart, and now I'm just going to start to unravel the sock blank. Now, as you can see, there are two strands coming apart from the sock blank and you can see that they have identical dye markings, okay? And you can also see that the yarn has a lot of kinks in it. So now you have a couple of different options here for using this yarn. The first option is that you could theoretically use the two strands held together and just pretend that these two fingering weight strands of yarn held together make a heavier weight yarn, just like a worsted weight yarn. So you can knit these two strands of yarn together just like you would a worsted weight yarn. The second option is that you could also knit two socks at the same time on one long circular needle. And so we do teach a class inside the School of Sweet Georgia called Two at a Time Socks, where we teach how to set up and knit two socks on one long circular knitting needle, and each sock could be knit from one strand of a double-stranded sock blank. And so in this case, you would just unravel the double sock plank as you go, and you knit the kinky unraveled yarn into your socks. Now, the kinky yarn might make your fabric feel a little bit bubbly or uneven as you knit, but when you go and you wet finish your items and you block them, the fabric should block out and look a little bit more even. Finally, my recommended option is to fully unravel and completely separate the two strands of yarn from the sock blank and make two hanks of yarn. You wash each hank of yarn and then hang them up to dry to relax the kinks in the yarn. Then when the hanks are dry, you can wind them into individual balls using a swift and a ball winder or on two cones like I have using a cone winder. So you can see these cones, each one represents one strand of the double sock blank. Now just as a quick comparison, you can see how bouncy and kinky this yarn is when it's coming straight out of the double sock blank. And then you can see the yarn that has been washed and rested and all of that and it's been wound onto cones and you can see it's perfectly pretty much entirely straight. So all of the kinks have been removed out of this particular yarn and it will knit up really nicely. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I typically prepare a double sock blank. I undo the knot at the start, like I said, and then I begin separating the two strands. And then I'm gonna set up my yarn swift. This one is the Schacht uh, Ultra Umbrella Swift. Um, and this swift can be set up so that the main stand is actually horizontal. Now, I also set up the Swift so that it's not too big, it's not too open, because if the Swift is too open, you can see that it creates sort of a deeper valley here. There's a big, deep valley here uh, in the center of the Swift. And then as I wind the yarn, it will generally fall into this middle, kind of gets sucked into the vortex of this area of the Swift. So since my goal is to wind two strands into two separate hanks, on one swift, 
I need to reduce the risk that the two strands will end up gravitating towards the middle of the swift and getting mixed together. So I need these two strands to stay as separate as possible at all times on the swift. So what I do is I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and you can see that this shape ends up being a lot more uh, shallow. It ends up being a lot more mellow. So with each strand, I'm going to tie them to uh, different ends of the swift. So one end I'll just tie here to this side and the other strand will get tied to the other end of the swift. And then I just take the double sock blank and I drop it to the floor. <laughs> So now I can go ahead and start winding the yarn onto the swift. And at the same time, you can see I'm holding the two strands apart with my fingers on my left hand, trying to keep them as far apart as possible uh, so that I can maintain two hanks on the swift. I also need to make sure that I'm not winding the yarn with too much tension on the swift, not pulling too hard, because if I pull, then the yarns will also gravitate towards the middle of the swift. So I'm just laying the two strands onto the swift and keeping them nice loose and keeping them as far apart as possible. And I'm almost, if you can see, kind of using my hands to lay the strands to the outside of the hank so that they don't get tangled up in the middle here. So this will take practice for sure. Okay, so every so often I'm gonna separate the two hanks just to make sure that there's a clear space between them and that the uh, two skeins are not getting tangled, okay? So I have come to the end of my sock blank and so I'm going to tie off these two hanks using a little bit of waste yarn in some figure eight ties. And that's going to help keep my skeins tidy when I go in and wash them and it will prevent the yarns from getting tangled. So I have a bit of waste yarn here from Leftover Bobbins and I'm going to use two different colors. Wherever the end of the sock blank happened, I'm going to tie this contrasting color to that end and that helps me remember which end is the end of the hank and then when I go to wind this onto a cone winder or onto a ball winder I'll know to start with this end with the contrasting yarn because that will help unravel this hank nicely and there won't be any tangles. I'm taking this one this is the end of my yarn and I take this end and I do a figure eight tie. So I'm holding it like so and I make a figure eight here so you can see the blue yarn is wrapping around here in a figure eight and then I take these two ends and I knot them all together okay with the starting strand I'm going to untie it from the side and I'm going to do the same thing so I'm using a lighter blue color here so I tie that end to the waist yarn Okay, so that is them um, tied together. Okay. And then I'm just going to go around the circumference of the hank and tie a couple more figure eight ties. So approximately every quarter turn. So you'll put four ties in your hank. Okay, so now we can take the hanks off of the swift. <laughs> You can already see how springy and bouncy this yarn is. So if I wash this and let it dry, it should relax out all of these little bumps in the yarn. And then when you go and knit with it, it will be a lot smoother. So again, as a comparison, you can see from the combs that have already been wound with this double sock blank, the strands are nice and relaxed compared to the bouncy skeins that are here. So these strands, these are ready to knit, crochet, or weave into your next project. Now, if you don't have a Swift like this, you could also use two ball winders. If you have one ball winder, you can borrow another ball winder, or you can wind them by hand, um, just into balls by hand, into separate balls, and then take those separate balls and then wind them into skeins. Or you can just knit from them 
as is, straight from the sock plank. And that's all there is to it. Please do let me know if you have any questions or comments about winding a double sock plank and what else you can make with a hand-dyed sock plank. This is one of my most favorite topics of all. And if you would like to join our amazingly warm and encouraging community of multi-craftual makers, you can find us online at sweetgeorgiayarns.com and also all of our fiber arts education at theschoolofsweetgeorgia.com. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. All right.